So I'll make it shorter now. That's actually good news, right? So uh, the idea for the session is just to show you the top, how top expansion plus plus works, where it was been in the past, where it's going, where where it, uh, uh, where uh, where we are now. How would you use it today, and how you will potentially use it in future, or actually how can you use it already today with some uh, uh, like uh, the small node underneath it. Uh, and uh, first, I want to explain. Uh, why would you do that? Then I will show you a little bit, uh, like uh, zooming in the past. So I will show you how it worked in the in the past. What was the idea initially? Uh, that Jason Shirk, who is, uh, I think he's not partial team member again, but he was not. Then he came up with really nice two side projects. One was Tab Expansion Plus Plus. The second one is that you probably already know today is PS Redline, and both were kind of. Uh, joined in the mothership when he joined the team back. Um, so, uh, and the PS3 line was actually uh, injected in a way that it uh, doesn't really hurt you so much. The top expansion plus plus was kind of, there was uh, actually pretty dramatic and uh, breaking changes between the two. Uh, so I will show you how you can actually survive that. Uh, and in the end, I will show you how you, if you if you already run PowerShell 5 on your production machines, you can already start using it. Uh, how many of you of you actually do that? How many of you have PowerShell 5 running in production? Wow, that's awesome. So you actually can just ignore the whole thing that I just said. But still, if you want to, for example, write the modules that support older versions, you're probably going to use this uh, information as well to actually give your uh, potential users uh, support for the top completion. Um, so uh, generally, there are many ways to skin the cat. So you can uh, you can definitely uh, provide some kind of top expansion by, and that's, this is what I see most of the time, that people just add the dynamic parameters to their commands. And just uh, on the fly, they will generate the, uh, um, the values that can be uh, used within the par with this parameter based on the what the information ha they have on the box, and uh, then it actually because the, the PowerShell is smart enough to top complete those things, they will get the same experience or so it seems. Uh, the problem with this approach is that uh, the dynamic parameters are not perfect. Well, let me rephrase it: the dynamic parameters are broken so much that you can hardly use them if you really uh, unless you really have to. Uh, they are not easy to discover. They are really laid bound, which means that if you have two parameters, one is uh, kind of looks like your dynamic parameter and another one that is a uh, static parameter, the static parameter always wins. So if uh, PowerShell will discover that one, it will actually use it. So for example, defining something like alias for the dynamic parameters doesn't make any sense. Uh, the perfect example is that we have minus D, I believe, for the directories as a uh, alias for uh, get child item, well, you will never get it because uh, minus D will be uh, seen as minus debug. Therefore, instead of getting directories, you will get the debug output from the command. Um, so in my opinion, you should use just the right tools for the job unless you really have good reason not to. And I will discuss some challenges so that I can show you when it's actually still probably a good idea to use those uh, kind of hacky ways to get those set of completions. But I will strongly will try to, to convince you that if you don't have to, you shouldn't do that. Uh, so first, let's see uh, a little bit about the past. Um, I won't run this code because it doesn't work. I will, however, try to open the uh, two things. First of all, there is a commit. Oh, wait, it won't work from the remote session. Let me just close that one first. Yeah, I was testing everything beforehand and obviously forgot to clean up afterwards. Uh, so let's try to run this one. Um, so um, the moment that Jason decided, okay, I want to merge the experience that we have in PowerShell 5 with what we have in the uh, module that is in gallery uh, and uh, uh, on, on GitHub, he had a major, major uh, pull request where he actually removed the old style of uh, defining the type of expansions for the commands that we had in the module and replace it with com the, the new way, uh, or actually the way that was already there but was not used uh, as frequently. 
So um, I actually have in my repo, I, because I didn't update it since, uh, my repo is still, uh, still uh, at the stage where it was those few years ago, because at this point in time, I kind of lost uh, the uh, uh, ability to kind of follow it. Uh, anyway, that's, that's basically how it looked before. So what we had, and I, I will show it in IEC because it's probably easier to read it here. Uh, what we had, we defined a function that nobody ever would call and some smartness from JSON would read the AST from this command, figure out that there's argument completer uh, attribute on this function, as you can see on the param block. And based on the content of this, it would figure out which commands, which parameters uh, and should be actually tab completed with the script lock that follow. Uh, the parameters for this function would be actually the parameters that we still have and will use in, a, in the next version. So you have the name of the command, you have name of the parameter, you have this very important bit where you have this uh, uh, word to complete, which is just exactly what the user typed before he pressed the tab. And you have command AST, so in some situation you actually want to see in which context the user run this uh, command, so what's, uh, what's around it. And um, we won't use it here, but it's definitely possible to use that information. And fake bound parameters, which is just like, uh, let's pretend that you have a command that have multiple parameters. Um, and you can look back, so you, you, the user specified, for example, computer name. Uh, he specified the name of the service and uh, started to specify the name of the service. So you go to this computer and check what the services are present on this computer rather than just uh, take the services that you have on your local box, which in this context doesn't make any sense because if you really want to go to remote computer and it's a Windows Server and you have Windows 10 laptop, you will definitely have different uh, uh, services on both of them. So this is where fake bound parameter and I'll go that back to that in, in next, uh, I mean, uh, later. Uh, and then you had some script lock to follow that. Uh, here you can see the example of using this uh, fake bound parameters to do something. And then uh, he also had this new complete completion result command that actually was generating those uh, uh, tab completions. So it was actually what it does. It create, creates objects that represent what you want to tab complete on. Um, uh, sorry, tab complete to. So all those uh, strings that you will in the end uh, uh, can, can tap through. Um, so if you want to kind of ad hoc fix it, what you would do is you would define a script block. And if you just do this like this, actually we can try to run this one. The problem with this one is that even if we register this, because that's a command that you use uh, from version five and above, but also in uh, any mod module version that you use now, you probably will use the register argument complete completer to uh, actually register those, uh, those completion. Uh, if you would try that, the problem is that this new completion result in version five, it doesn't exist. So we cannot reuse really it in our time computers. So if I would try to run this thing, it wouldn't work, unfortunately. Um, so just to show you how that goes, so I have to here uh, three different approaches. First of all, there's completer for version four. Uh, so I assume that you have this version four, you have uh, um, uh, top expansion plus plus module installed on it, maybe from gallery, maybe you just download it from GitHub, you just drop it on your box and you have it. Uh, and it already means that version three, version four, you still can use this top complete completion, but in the different format. So uh, if I would do that with the module, I can use this completer. If I would use it, do, do that on version five, what I would do normally is just use this, uh, uh, syntax uh, sugar for the creating uh, new instances of the class or maybe new object. Generally, I would just, just generate it like that. Uh, the problem is that this one works on version four, but doesn't work on version five because of what I just mentioned, the new completion result function doesn't exist on version five. On the other hand, this one uses the syntax that is only compatible with version five. So if I try the same on the version four, it won't work. So if you are an author and you want to share it with others, you probably want to have something that you don't have to explain to everybody. If you have version three, you use this. If you have version five, use this. If you have version 4.5.6.7.8, use this something completely different. You don't want to do that. And in order to avoid it, you would just create, create the something that works across all of them. So in this case, I use new object commandlet, which existed since version one, I think. 
Oh, I, I haven't spent too much time on version 5, and I don't remember clearly if it was there already or not. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You definitely have it. And uh, we use the syntax that will r r work across, across all of them. So if I try to do that on my laptop at the moment, I just, just have a function. I use all of them. And we will see the, the as you can see, I have 5.1 here. So if I try to uh, use this test uh, completer and I specify first, then I get some time completion for that. Uh, if I uh, specify second, I don't get nothing. So I can try to put something, but it may be completely wrong, like I say foo, without thinking what, what could be used for that one. And if I specify third, I again get something, because this is uh, something that will work regardless of the version that you have. Um, and as you can see, it was complaining that the second is foo, which it shouldn't be, because I expect integers. So yeah, sorry that didn't work. Uh, and if I try to connect now to uh, to my uh, domain controller, which still runs uh, PowerShell version 4, and actually define those things over there too, and I just installed, I mean, I don't, wouldn't recommend installing uh, Tapping Expression++ on your domain controllers. It's probably not the best, uh, best, best idea ever, but I just couldn't find any uh, version 4 uh, uh, v VM on my laptop. The, the, the DC was the only one that still had uh, version 4, probably because it works, so I don't touch it. Um, so as you can see, uh, wait a minute. What? Oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't enter PS session and exit. Oh yeah, that, that doesn't, thank you very much. So <laughs> the plan was just to enter first and exit it later, yes. And if we try it here, as you can see, I have version 4. So if I try to do more or less the same, so test, uh, what was it, completer. So the first is version 5 compliant, but it doesn't comply with uh, version 4. So again, I can type in foo. The second, it because I'm using the uh, v4 syntax, it works. And the third, it's again cross-platform, so I can select wherever I want. And as you can see, those things work the way they do, and I would like to stop um, for a second here to explain uh, the parameters for this uh, new completion result or in this extension also the uh, um, parameters that you have for uh, the, the constructor of this object. So the first thing that you have here uh, in the completion result is actual text that will be uh, put in the command line. So um, normally, the second one will be identical. You don't want to show the user something different that he will eventually get. As, I, as you probably noticed, I did something completely different. I actually broke it in a way that you pick me, pick me, and uh, you normally don't do that, right? So normally, you would have those two identical. Uh, the third parameter is the type of the returned object, because you can have uh, arguments for your commands, you can have command names, you can have classes, all of those those have different uh, icons. So if I try to tap complete something, let's maybe exit from this guy. If I try, try to get, uh, I don't know, um, system dot, and I do here, I get different uh, icon up, up front than I, when, uh, when I would uh, tap complete a parameter for the, uh, for the command. So for the most part, it's not really important, and default value is actually parameter value, so this is exactly what you want. And um, and the last thing is the tooltip. So if you have this here, the tooltip, I uh, think that it should still work. So if I type the first, and I want to see, um, uh, not, not test command, it's completely it's the name. So if I stop here, you can see that there's some extra text displayed next to it. And it can be useful. I mean, you can specify some extra information about the given object uh, that you consider that user may be uh, interested in. And this is the, f the this is this uh, last parameter of the constructor, and this is called tooltip. So you can specify what what tooltip you want to use with it. Uh, generally speaking, you could get away with just one parameter, which is the first one, because we have this constructor as well, and it will just use the default for everything else. So it will be. Uh, it will have the same value for the, what was being displayed on the list, the same value for the, what was being injected in your command. There won't be tooltip, I believe, and uh, the, uh, the type will be used, uh, that we'll use it will be parameter value. So we can actually just double check that uh, because yeah, this is just, just a question of creating a completion result. Oh, that's not you. Uh, 
Yeah, that's that's why I need to type expression plus plus so desperately because as you can see I can hardly type anything without it. So if you look at the constructors, you can see that you can have this this really uh, broad one with all the parameters, but you can just specify text. So text. And if I do that, as you can see, the list item is text, the com completion text is text, result type is text, okay, and tooltip is text as well. So it just, just put it everywhere where it could. I'm surprised this result type is text. I was expecting actually the parameter value, wherever it works. If you, if, so if you just don't care about all those extra metadata, uh, you, are, you are good to go with just specifying, okay, this is the text I want to output to your user and he will get the experience that like 99% of time it will be sufficient. And to show you actually how that may behave, um, let's connect to another VM. I will define a small function. Um, this one is actually using the uh, V5 uh, way of uh, registering. So as you can see, I have just function definition. And uh, if I'm trying to find AD object now, I can actually tap complete the attributes in AD. So it just, just works like with the AD filters. So I can say name, uh, it's, let's use my name for now. And I have also properties for parameter and for that one I can also tap complete things. So I can name display name. And you can also do this crazy thing like, uh, let's say you have this member of column. So if any of you familiar with the syntax, so when you have the really like LDAP filters that do um, LDAP matching rule next, blah, blah, blah. I don't remember the name exactly. Uh, you can actually do that here. So if I tap complete it, you can see here. So it not only will tap, tap complete the, the only thing that works with this one, um, but also it will actually show me LDAP matching rule in chain. So I know exactly what I'm, what I'm actually putting in there. Uh, not only see what I can put in there, and then I can just put the, the distinguished name and get something. Yes? Uh, well, actually, finding the object is not a command that you have out of the box. Uh, you're thinking about search ID object, I believe. Yes, that's yes. that's the one that we have. So find ID object is actually the command that we did this call. Like, I, I kind of wrote a, a while in a, ago in the past. And all, all I did here is just added some uh, friendly uh, tab expansion so that you can actually just not, you don't have to remember this or Google this, uh, this uh, OID to actually get to this uh, to these values. Uh, and uh, well, it's, it's one of the examples where actually it's easy because, um, well, all I have to do is go to Active Directory and ask it for what attributes do you have. It gives me all the, the, the LDAP uh, names of them and then I can just tap complete them because that's exactly what I'm, I'm looking for here. So um, I mentioned that we have different uh, phases uh, so, um, this register, yeah, I should probably move to the slides too a bit because we discussed the past, we didn't discuss, this is the presence. If anybody recognizes the guy, I actually don't wear a red t-shirt, I probably should wear one today. Um, and now we will talk about more about future. So what we can do with, the, uh, with that in the, in the near future, or you can actually, you guys can do that today because you already have PowerShell version 5 running. And obviously you need it only on the, your management machine or, uh, or wherever you run your code. You don't need to have it on, uh, on uh, um, serv servers that you, co you are controlling it with because you, this, this is only a user experience that you want to have uh, on the place where you actually run the code, not where the co code runs. So what the way you would do that is to use the uh, attribute on your parameter that it's kind of similar to what we had in the past on the uh, on the uh, param param block on this, those fake functions that nobody will ever run. Um, and all you have to do is just generally, uh, in you have to implement interface uh, e argument completer. But you have to be careful, obviously, because first of all, uh, as any inter interface, it kind of has some uh, contract. So you have to fulfill this contract. And it's not enough to just create a class that it requires. You still have to make sure that this class actually does what it should do. And well, the best way to actually start with it is just to read documentation. Um, it will probably work if I just exit 
DPS session now because we don't need it anymore. So if I just open it, there's pretty good documentation MSDN. Um, the only two uh, built-in uh, top computers at the moment that use this f feature, I believe it's a verb on get comment that uses that uh, or leverages this. And the second one, I believe, was uh, for the uh, addition of Windows so that you can select between core and, and uh, any other additions that you may come up with. But as you can see, this is very similar to, the, uh, to this uh, script block that we uh, started with. So you specify the name of the command as a string, as a, this was one of the parameters of this, uh, of this method. Another one is parameter name, word to complete, AST, a and fake bound parameters. So you have ag ag almost one to one, actually it's not even almost, it's actually identical as the, the one that we had before. So let's look at the class that actually is kind of implemented. So, um, the way you would do that, you just specify those parameters, and yeah, you have to return something. But if you return empty collection, well, this is not very interesting because then if somebody will try to tap complete uh, the parameter that we just created here, he won't get anything here because we don't return anything. So next thing you do, you uh, want to basically do some logic around the thing that our uh, are already in the command line and perhaps do something about that. So this is uh, where I define this class again uh, that will be used. And as you can see, the syntax is relatively simple. So what you would do is just use this argument completer as attribute on your parameter. And inside of it, you would have to use the class name as a, um, as a what actually was used to, to get this top completion going. And the rest is the, the black magic that happens on the, under the, the waters uh, that you don't have to worry about. Uh, so if you implement something like that, again, this is not really working solution, I would say. So we have test prefix sets. I made the logic really useless. As you can see, I can prefix it with pre, then I can prefix, prefix it with something else. And so I can just go on like that forever because what I did, I didn't really make it uh, sensible to, uh, to the word to complete, right? I didn't really use it so much. And I kind of uh, made it uh, kind of uh, circling around, but it is implemented, it returns some objects. So I get the top completion going. And now we will move to step by step. So I will try to take you through the journey uh, from like, okay, I have this command and I want to have uh, the user experience so that the person that is, will use my command will actually be able to, uh, to receive this uh, top expansion plus plus. So first you have to decide what you want to use. I don't have any code for that because this is happening in your brain and I couldn't really have uh, the snippet of that. So you have to decide if you want to uh, use this register argument completer so your function or your command any command is should be v3 compliant or uh, you for example write something that will work with classes or something that will work with dsc and you can potentially do that with four but you probably don't want to so if you do something that is definitely v5 uh, there's no good reason not to do the argu uh, the argument sorry uh, uh, the attribute on the on the on the parameter so but you have to make this decision yourself right next thing you would have to uh, prepare the script block that you will be used to actually tap complete. So here I have my small function. It's, as you can see, it's really, 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 really simple. All it does, it just, just allows me to show my VMs on my laptop. And um, completer for that one, it's obviously using the um, what we already saw before that we did for Hyper-V module so that I actually tell it, okay, check if there is computer name specified. If somebody specifies the computer name as one of the parameters, I want to inject it in my fake bind one parameters and make it a part of my uh, logic. So I want to go to get VM on this computer name rather than local computer. And then I just select the, any, any VM that has a name that matches word to complete star. So I don't want to like ma match it everywhere, but you can do that if you want. And then I sort it so I don't get like, uh, you know, it's nice if the things are sorted in the output because then if like human being 
tends to think in the alphabetical order. So if you see uh, CA and after that there is DC and after that is AB, then you will think, okay, something is not really correct here and you will have hard time finding this, this third VM because you would expect it to be the first one on the list. So sorting is actually a good idea at, always for those kind of things. And then uh, we just concluded with creating this uh, new object. Um, and let's try that. Um, so we need to now uh, register this, right? So we, if we decide, okay, this is Hyper-V module, it runs on uh, older operating systems, I don't really want to lock myself just to uh, version five and above. So I will just use the register argument compiler because that command works both in the V5 and V3. And I specify this, uh, um, this script block, which also uh, was written intentionally in a way that V5 will, will, will gladly accept it and V3 will also work with it. Let's try this one. And if I, if I have it now, I should be able to tap complete uh, show VM. So show VM, oh. show VM. And now you can see the list of my VMs on the laptop. So I can show, I know this one is actually alive, so I can actually show that it works. Now that I turn it off, yeah, of course. Anyway, uh, if I would find the one that lives, I could show you that it actually works and it's still, you know, it's just a simple wrapper around this command. So the point is that just by doing that, I got the, the feedback and I could really select the VM that exists on this laptop rather than uh, just just uh, guess what uh, could be there. Um, we can also define it as attribute even using the script block because the point is that uh, this argument completer is not only uh, accepting the classes, which is kind of good that they didn't do, do it like that. It also allows you to specify the script block and the script block should return the object that you want. And um, the way it does it, you can actually have all the script block they just I just uh, defined written down in the in the command and actually if you look at the find ad object i believe i did it exactly like that so if i open here the my param block and the parameters uh, so this is the argument completer come on open up so as you can see the whole thing is actually written down in here so i have param block i do some times and return stuff from this uh, switch so uh, you can definitely do that like that. So if you don't want to have like classes involved in that, because you, first of all, you may not feel like writing classes now. Also the experience is sometimes uh, not really that, that uh, it's kind of shaky sometimes. So if you want to do that in, a, in the form of script blocks, you can stu still do that. Uh, and here I actually calling the script block with uh, just the parameters. So I kind of forward the parameters back to this, uh, to this uh, script block that I just defined. And it will actually work with that and just, uh, sorry. Um, as, you can, as you can see, it's the good thing about it is that the whole thing is nested with your function. So if you can use this uh, this way, I would strongly recommend it because of that. You don't have extra command like register argument completer running in your in your module. You can have your functions defined and immediately with the function, you define how a uh, user can be uh, helped with uh, completing your parameter values. So if, if I define it like that, we can go back just to prove that it actually works. So show, oh, see, I wasn't joking, really. That's not funny. So um, as you can see, I can just tap complete anything that starts with D and that just works. Um, yeah. Okay. So yeah, important things to note is that yeah, you definitely want to use a word to complete uh, in your logic. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense because if you don't use it, it probably is not. It means that the stop completion is not dynamic at all, right? Because it only starts to become dynamic if you use this word to complete. So somebody typed in something. The ex expectation from the user is that if he typed in D, you want uh, show him the uh, Gen One uh, VM that I just show you because it's not what he expects. He expects to see only the things that start with D. That's like usual behavior of those tab completers and you should follow. So that's the first thing. If another thing, if whenever it makes sense, I don't think I have a code because we already seen it. Oh, actually I have it, okay. Uh, whenever you have an option to do that, you do want to use uh, fake bound parameters. I think you can 
nest those. So for example, if the get VM, it only makes sense to check if the user specified computer name. But if you have a get VM network adapter, you perhaps want to check if the user specified also the VM name. So now you know, okay, you can narrow it down, not just to, uh, to the given computer, uh, given the Hyper-V server, but you can narrow it down even more just to given VM. So if I define it here, I have a script block, I have uh, the list of commands that I want to add it to, and if I do it like that, okay, demo gods, demo gods, let's wait for them for a minute. So get VM network adapter. If I specify the VM name PC, I just get the uh, name, and I just get those two uh, a VM network adapter that exist on this particular VM. I don't get the list of all of them that exist on all VMs that I have in my environment. So you, you, you really make sense to use this fake bound parameters and it's really nice thing uh, to kind of uh, help the user experience, I mean, improve it even more. Because the sole fact that they, you can tap complete all those uh, uh, VM uh, network adapters is already cool, but if you can narrow it down so that users don't have to guess if it's actually coming from the right VM or some other VM, because you kind of have, you know, very often you have all them named the same because you don't change the default name, so it's network adapter number, yet, uh, number one, network adapter number two, but that doesn't help you if you see all those in the list and then you have to figure out yourself which actually, uh, which name actually you want to get. Um, but there are some gotchas, so you have to be careful with this. So the first one is that um, if you have I, if you have completion result and it just you are sure that it will, won't contain any spaces, you are good to go with just new uh, new object and all those things that I just showed you. The problem sh uh, is that if you have spaces in the names and you want to tap complete it, you want to have quotes around it usually. Otherwise, it, the command won't fly because you will have the first token that's assigned to the parameter that you specified, but the all other tokens will will try to be matched to the other positional parameters, and 99% of the time it won't fly, it won't work at all. So um, what the, the, what uh, Jason did to actually fix it is in his new completion result, he has a logic that allows you to avoid those uh, pitfalls. So here I will try to show you what the, what the what the result is first. So as you can see, I just had a foo and a foo bar, and one contains spaces, the other doesn't. So the moment that uh, uh, parser discovers that there is a space in the name that would, was returned from the previous uh, command, it will actually surround it with the quotes for me. So I don't have to worry about like uh, assigning different values to the parameters that I didn't really want to assign them to. And what uh, how Jason did it. I think it's kind of a smart thing to do. Uh, he basically just uses the power, PowerShell parser to parse something that is echo the string that he just got from the whatever command he was running, so it's dynamic. And then if the, the number of tokens uh, is not e exactly three, or there are some specific uh, uh, other, um, um, other conditions are met, he will surround it with uh, just, just uh, this uh, um, quotation. If not, he will just return whatever he got in initially. Therefore, in the end, you just get a top completion that works regardless if you have spaces in the things that is returned from the, the, the dynamic thing. So in case of the VM names, it probably wouldn't fly. I didn't even try ever name my VM with the spaces in the name, but I'm pretty sure that the network adapters are having this issue. So if I would try to use different VM, uh, let's just not specify VM, because then I definitely will get some nice, uh, yeah, that takes a while. So I have this legacy network adapter. If I, I didn't include this this fix, and as, as you can see, immediately I got wrong parameter. It should be uh, surrounded by the quotations, otherwise it just doesn't work. And if I would have this fix uh, from, uh, from JSON, that wouldn't happen. It would just work fine. Um, another thing I discovered myself at work, because um, I don't like to put in credentials, and some commands actually do require, the commands that I use do require credentials, so I had uh, them defined in PS default parameter values. The problem is that fake bound only bounds the things that you specified in the command line. So it doesn't see 
all those goodies that you have in your uh, uh, PS default parameter values. Credentials is maybe not the best example, but there are definitely situations where you have those, like you always ask for VMs from this host, or you always ask for the processes on this server. You don't want to specify that in line, so you, you would use PS default parameter values, but the tab completion won't discover that in the fake bound. You have to have extra logic in there to be able to, to get things. So let's just specify this PS default parameter values and set VM network adapter VM name to DC. And if I try to run this one again, it will take a while, but um, you will see that instead of getting just uh, this uh, network adapters from DC, so external, internal, I get a lot more. That's because it couldn't really discover that. So uh, the way I did it in the end is that I kind of look up the PS default parameter values for uh, for this particular parameter from this command, and as you can see, that's one of the examples when you can use finally use a dollar command name that is kind of uh, thrown at you when you do the whole uh, discovery. So I think I hardly use it, but this is one of the examples that would actually be useful. So let's try to define this uh, script block. And I'm then doing the same uh, logic still without the uh, extra quotation. But if I do the set VM network adapter name now, it should just list those one that come from the main controller, not all others. Because now it's actually smart enough. Here I just just did it that I just just look up the the PS default parameter values, and if it's there, I just take the value uh, that I find in this. Okay, um, that was all my demos, so I think I'm pretty good on time. Uh, any questions? Uh, a, a comparison, I mean, like... Uh, Uh, but that works only in the newer version of PowerShell. There was a bug in previous versions that will actually not do that. Uh, I do remember this specifically because that was one of the reasons I recommended uh, Taco Expansion++. Plus Plus. I know that they fixed it in, I think, version 4 or 5. Uh, but this quotation, is, it's really, it's there for free. You just have to put the logic for yourself. And I really hope I will probably give this uh, the, the, to the team as a feedback because I would really ha like to have this new completion result as a function that you don't have to do all this, uh, you know, extra logic yourself to, to fix the problems on, uh, underneath it. You would just specify all this, uh, so the, uh, the text, uh, the, the list item text, uh, the type, uh, the tooltip, and uh, a comment AST, all those parameters are kind of uh, used normally. So uh, I would say that uh, the, the main difference is that, uh, first of all, you can do that for the commands that you don't control. So that's the major for me. Uh, like you have all those commands that exist on your box already, you cannot really uh, like you, you can potentially create a proxy function that will use dynamic parameters. But instead of doing that, you can just register argument completer, specify the script block, and you are good to go. Um, but another thing is that if you even if you do it for your own uh, uh, parameters, this discover the discoverability and documentation of this parameter still is possible. Whereas when you have dynamic parameters. They are not discovered easily, and they cannot be redocumented unless, unless you just uh, add something in the notes or something. Because you cannot, even if you put this uh, comment-based help for the parameter, it won't show. So if you just do get help this parameter, because we actually struggle with that uh, at work, uh, we have commanded that we actually have good reason to use uh, uh, dynamic parameters, and we are, we are not able to document. Uh, those parameters, and we have like just huge section in the description that describes all, all those dy dynamic parameters. So, and so I think that for that reasons, and the slate bound, I mean, most of the time you won't suffer from it, but like this example with the uh, uh, the ls minus d uh, or material item minus directory, uh, if you specify the full name or enough of it, uh, it will discover that you want this dynamic parameter directory. If you just specify ls minus d, it will think that you want to debug, and that's not exactly what you wanted. And even for the documentation, will show you, okay, this uh, parameter has an uh, alias D, uh, that alias doesn't work. 
Any other questions? Yes. So, so the question was, uh, what's uh, what ends up in the fake bound parameters? So, in this, this is a hash table similar to the PS bound parameters. The only difference is that it's not really bound yet, but you see all the uh, all the parameters are keys in this hash table, and all the values are whatever the user typed in uh, in there. Including, like, it doesn't have to be just a string; it can be complex object, object as well. So, you can get this information, whatever the user kind of wants to use with this function already, or commandlet, uh, you already have it in this fake bound parameters. So yeah, you basically you just check if the, the key is there in the hash table. Uh, and if it's there, you check if the value is something that you expect. And for example, there are some commandlets, that, uh, some, some of those uh, completers that we have where uh, it's necessary to have, for, for example, those credentials that I mentioned. So uh, we have a function that is able to talk to the um, Bitbucket server, and that one, uh, we can list the, for example, repos in a given project, but to talk to this API, we need credentials. So if you don't specify credentials first, we just return immediately because we cannot do anything. So this fake bound parameters may be not only used to, to like kind of, uh, um, uh, lower or sorry, uh, uh, like limit the, the results. It can be also used to to exit early and just not even tr bother trying because you won't be able to do that. Any other question? Okay, so uh, to summarize it, uh, you really it's Im for me it's important that uh, people pick the right tools to do the the job that they want to achieve, uh, and I, I believe that uh, for the majority of things. Uh, the, if you read, all you need is just tap completion for your parameter values. Uh, tap expansion plus plus is the way to go. It's tricky now because you have to be aware of those uh, caveats and different versions. But uh, looking forward, like in a few years when the V5 will be de facto standard, you can start altering your uh, tools in a way that you just have this argument completer as a, as, uh, as a way to, to explain what you want to achieve. And I hope that this, this problem with the codes will be fixed so it's, we don't have to worry about that. It's something is, uh, that is being take care, taken care of for us. Um, it's important to stay in the current time. So you just look around, see you in your organization or wherever you do. If you are writing some open source project, just make sure that you don't, uh, uh, you know, don't jump on this V5 wagon because you, temptation is, hard, uh, is big, especially for me, uh, to do that. Uh, if you have good reason to, to do that, do so. If not, just try to make sure that you are supporting older versions and you don't like, you know, you have really nice module that everybody is using, but you d decide, okay, I just cut off now, just leave it with V5 compliant only just because I can have tab completion with the attributes. That's not the way to go, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, use future uh, if possible, justified. So, as I mentioned, in our organization, we have V5. Point one only. Therefore, it was no reason whatsoever to keep uh, compliant uh, the, to keep uh, the um, the version that was uh, compliant with uh, V3 or V4. Therefore, we already do most of the things in those classes. We just just define a class. And the good thing about the classes is that you can actually have nest, uh, like uh, you know inheritance. So you have a class that is just like basic completer for something, but then you kind of uh, derive from this class and do something fancy about that. So actually this thing that I show you just with this LDAP matching rule, this is actually one class is uh, used just to tap complete uh, the properties because that's enough. Uh, and uh, on top of that, we build up something for the filter because you know all this LDAP matching rule in chain doesn't make any sense in the properties for the, for the user or object in AD, but it makes perfect sense to have it in the filter part. So we actually, have a class for just uh, properties. And on top of that, we have another class that extends the functionality. So if the, if the, the uh, whatever people type in and matches the, the, the def default uh, type computer for the property name or attribute name in ID, we actually go there. And if you just specify something else, we do some extra logic there. Uh, so I think it's really important to just like, if you can do, but if you don't, if you don't see a good reason, just stay on the old version. And with that, I guess we should finish uh, because uh, uh, I don't think there is a 15-minute break now. 
Uh, I mean, I finished before time, so you still have this 15 minutes break. Uh, but um, but yeah, you can grab a coffee. So unlike others, which are probably still locked down in their rooms, you can grab a coffee and I, you can change the room so you can actually uh, join another session. Uh, thank you for uh, your attendance and for all, all the good questions.